Well, Tony Misson has made the trip down from Tamworth for his first visit to Clubman Angle. I caught up with Tony to have a talk about his career in harness racing and how the family did a full 360 to become involved in this sport. Well, Tony, good to catch up with you. First visit to a club in Angle. You've had horses here previously, but this time you've made the trip. Yes, Mike, I'm a bit of a bushy. I don't like the traffic, so I usually uh, fudge my way around it, but this time I thought I will have a roll of the dice and go. First impressions? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I'm really eye opened what I expected. Beautiful, beautiful amenities, yeah. I hope you had earplugs in the trip down because you've come down with Darren Elder. He can talk, that fella. Yes, yes, he knows a few stories. As I mentioned, a full 360 as far as the Misson family is concerned. We go back to the 30s and 40s with greyhounds involved in the family. Yes, my grandfather, uh, Bill Misson, or uh, William Keith, as he was known in them days, he was a very successful greyhound trainer, big punter, and always wore a suit and a pork pie hat to the dogs, trots or gallops, or anything. That He was the best dressed man on the course. And your wife's got the greyhound bug as well? Yes, yes, she started training him. Well, I tra- trained the first one. And she's, I was hopeless. Anyway, the stewards come around and seen it in a 44 with a chaff bag in there, and they said, you can't do that, Mr. Misson. So my wife took over and got a Mickey Mouse camel build, and she was very successful. Now, apart from the greyhounds, you went from that particular part of the racing industry to become a jockey. Yeah, in the younger days, um, uh, I was apprenticed to Merv Collis, a bit of a legend in the Tamworth area. And, uh, yeah, we had 37 winners. I was only a bush battler, but, yeah, it got me a deposit on my house, so that was good. The 1981 Port Macquarie Cup would have helped in that regard then? Yeah, that was actually my last win. I was getting pretty had pretty long legs by that stage. I looked like a grasshopper on a horse. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, managed to get it home from uh, the late Dawn Kelly. You enjoy that part of it? Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, enjoyed it. I loved it. But just the dieting and wasting was pretty hard. Yeah, that certainly is the setback as far as being a jockey. A lot more easy as far as harness racing is concerned. Yeah, yeah, it is good. You can have a hamburger and then go and jump in the gig. It's, yeah, good. So when did your harness racing career take off, Tony? Uh, 1991, um, and you wouldn't believe it, the first horse I started won at Narrabri. And I thought, oh, this is easy. Oh, well, boy, was I wrong. But, uh, no, Neil Shaw uh, got me into it. He used to come up to Tamworth quite regularly in the old Saturday night days and got to know him, uh, mainly at the West Lease Club, where we'd have a drink after the races. And, uh, yeah, he got me my first few horses and a very good mentor. So, Tony, your last ride as a jockey was a win. Your first venture into harness racing was a winner. Yeah, there might be something in that. Maybe my first visit to Menengel might be a winner. Who knows? You never know, you know. never know you're like in the big city. Now, December 2016, just bad memories. Yeah, that was a bad night. Uh, it, was a, it was the last race at Tim, I think, on a night meeting, and um, I was on one of the favourites, a horse called Terra Nish, and she used to pull ferociously, and I'm in the 1-1, and... She eventually choked down and, and, and collapsed in the middle of the race and, uh, yeah, three or four fell and I got hit in the head with the gig and knocked me out cold. First time I've ever been knocked out of all the football and that I've played. But, um, yeah, they flew me to John Harner, but yeah, it all fell back into place. You certainly didn't muck about. A shattered pelvis, a broken shoulder, a broken collarbone. And as you said, you got knocked out, so did you remember much of it? No, I remember. The last thing I remember was seeing the horse's tail and I thought geez, where am I going to go here? I was worried about it kicking me, and that's the last thing I remember. That must have been when the other gig hit me in the head, because that's the last I remembered. And I woke up in the back of the ambulance. Did you decide to give driving away at that particular stage, or just ease your way out of it? Nah, no, I couldn't wait to get back in the gig again. But, I mean, I'm a bit getting a bit old now. So I'm 61 now, so I only drive at the trials. I might drive one every pancake day. Yeah. And your wife Joy is now joining you in that particular phase of the industry. She's jumping in the sulky. Yeah, she, she rates herself as the oldest concession driver in New South Wales. She's 50, so... But no, she's loving it. She'll get there. That's a wonderful family sport. Oh, unbelievable, yeah. And my son Daniel owns a few of the horses and he's a successful caller and that, so it's really good, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get into his career in just a moment. You mentioned rugby league. Did What position did you play for and who? Uh, yeah, fullback. Yeah, or winger. Just, yeah, I didn't... Didn't like the big fellas too much, but no, I was only a little skinny fella. But no, I had a bit of a story there if you've got time. Yeah. I actually um, died on the field in 1986 playing football. It was a really hot day and um, my heart stopped and they put the fibula, the heart thing, whatever you call them, on me and got me going again. And Anyway, they said, no more football for you. And I used to play Australian rules before that in Gunnar. And my coach rang me up and said, oh, come and play Australian rules because the unlimited interchange in them days you can come and have a kick and a giggle and so I did and I started kicking a few goals and getting a few write-ups you know Lazarus back from the dead and anyway I hear this big knock on the door 
couple of weeks later, oh, it'd be a couple of months later, getting towards the end of the season, to be rugby league coach. He said, what is this I hear you playing bloody? I've been reading about you in the paper. And I said, oh, no, just kicking the gig. He said, well, you better come down and train on Tuesday and Thursday. You're on the bench on Sunday. I didn't have the heart to tell him the, rugby, the Australian Rules Grand Final was on the Saturday. So I played an ear, one ear, got drunk, had to get the coach's wife to drive me back to Tamworth. And you wouldn't believe it won the rugby league one on the Sunday. So I won two first grade grand finals in two days. So that was pretty unique. Certainly unique. That's outstanding. Congratulations on that. But yeah. the bad fall at Tamworth, followed by being pronounced dead on a football field, just good to see you here, Tone. <laughs> I've had more lives than a cat, <laughs> they tell me. But uh, now I'll keep bouncing back. Hey, you mentioned your son, Daniel. He's... Uh, role in harness racing sort of went off in another direction as you mentioned uh, now a very uh, talented up-and-coming broadcaster yeah he's doing quite well with uh, 2 k icon and um he's still got his job at his radio station which he enjoys and um yeah he started off with the mini trotters and said dad i don't want to do this anymore i want to call him i said right on, mate do you do what you want so he started calling him like at, when he was 12 years age or something you get up in the spare commentator's box and call the golden guitar and all that but no he's done well he's, well, like the entire family, Tony, he's got a foot in each particular part of the industry, the greyhounds, the thoroughbreds and the harness racing. Yeah, yeah, well, my brother was a successful driver too, um, but he, he's a bit sick now, but he was a good driver too, Peter. And you spent a lot of time with Australia Post for your full-time job? Yeah, tw 21 years, they were really good to me because they are pretty flexible for me hours and that because, as you know, trots are on every pancake day, so they were really good to me, they were good to work for. You were able to keep your hand in as far as the uh, thoroughbred industry was concerned? Yeah, then when I left Australia Post, I went and worked for a fellow called Craig Martin for about four or five years, so that was good, but I'm just sick of the early starts. So I, I give it away early this year, so yeah, just kicking back with the trotters now. Yeah, Craig's brother wouldn't have to be Tim, would it? It is. That's, that's his brother. He's quite a successful trainer down at Goulburn. Tim is a bit of a larrikin, but Craig's a bit more laid back, but they're both good trainers. Well, Tony, it's been great to catch up with you. First time to a club. Hopefully, you'll be paying us a visit on a more regular basis. Good luck with the trip home with Darren. Yes, thank you very much, Mike. Enjoyed it.